This video was made in association with KnifeInformer.com. Head on over to Knife Informer for all of your blade-related needs, including reviews, comparisons, stats, and more. What is up, everybody, and welcome to my first Knife Makers Showcase. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Andre Thorburn. I wanted to uh, do something special with these knives. I have these three Thorburns uh, laying around, and, you know, I wanted to make a video, but it's kind of hard to, um, you know, just, like, review custom knives and and especially I've already made a video on an L36 uh, even though you know this is a different one and uh, I've made a video on an L48 which was very similar to this L28 and you know after a while you can only say that Andre makes the best knives ever so many times <laughs> before uh, before it gets a little boring so I had these knives I wanted to be able to show them off uh, and I thought that it would be interesting to talk to you guys a little bit about Andre as a knife maker and just kind of go over his whole um, kind of process and, and his story so that you can kind of get a perspective for uh, where his knives come from and, you know, what they're like and everything if you haven't gotten a chance to check them out yourselves. Um, so let's just jump into kind of an introduction. Andre has been making knives for over 25 years now. It's quite a long time. He, uh, he hails from Johannesburg, South Africa, and he grew up on a small farm where he learned to work with his hands. Obviously, many years later, that's turned out to, uh, be rather important. <laughs> Um, in 1978, he married Marietti, who I'm sure I'm not pronouncing her name properly, um, as I won't a couple other names in this video. But uh, in 78, he married Marietti, who's responsible for these uh, amazing bolster designs that we've come to love, actually. So all three of these bolsters here that you see on these knives, these hand stippled designs, very unique and very excellent. Uh, always mirrored on each side, done by hand so you can see small differences, which I think is even cooler than having something perfect, especially something perfect done by a machine. Um, because, you know, it's just so hard to get in there with that detail, and these pieces are really special. So that's his wife actually making those, which is really neat. Um, and they got married many years before he actually even started making knives. Uh, so it's super cool, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, so speaking of beginning making knives, Andre began doing so in 1989, and uh, he became a member of the South African Knife Makers Guild in 1995, and a full-time knife maker in 1996. Later on, he uh, won the Best Overall Knife Maker Award at the Knife Makers Guild Show in 2008, 2010, and 2011, three years Best Overall Knife Maker uh, winning in four categories, uh, four other categories each of those times. Uh, so really amazing. Uh, and those awards are uh, some of the best among a slew of other amazing awards, including Knife of the Year in 2009 in Germany. Um, interestingly, uh, Andre does use advanced technology in the making of his knives, including CNC and water jet machines, which I actually didn't know that until... Uh, recently, um, you know, I always thought that these, I've, I've always told people that these were fully handmade, um, but it does make sense that uh, some of these cuts are done on, on something like a water jet. But, uh, you know, it's really important to remember that even if he is getting his basic shapes for his liners and, and scales and stuff from those machines, um, all of these edges are still contoured by hand. This uh, beautiful blade is still done entirely hand rub satin um, and so you know obviously these are still again hand stippled by mariachi and he is getting his 3d milled clips and stuff which is totally normal and fine um, but this file work in the back here uh, i believe is done by hand as well uh, maybe it's not though actually it is pretty perfect i'm not really sure but uh, the point is is that these are still hand finished to perfection and uh, a cnc machine is not responsible for something like this as much it is as much as it is on something like a Grimsmo Norseman, which by the way are hand finished very well as well by Eric. You know, John gets these things C and C'd, and then Eric jumps in and takes care of the rest. But this is not a video about the Norseman. Uh, so moving on, 
Uh, nowadays, you know, Andre continues to make incredible one-off pieces with mariachi, like the three that we see here. Um, these are all fairly recent knives. Um, and he offers a couple other types of knives via um, his little brand with Andre Van Heerden uh, A-squared knives. And those are um, different in a few ways. A lot of times you'll see a Thorburn. Uh, they're all very dressy. Um, even in some of the more tapered knives that he does, or t tame, sorry, is the word I was looking for. Um, even some of the more tame knives he does in, in something like a G10 finish, um, those are still pretty dressy, generally. Um, a lot of them will still have a bolster in a really nice material, or with hand etching. Um, and generally, the Thorburns themselves are, are fairly dressy, even in some of the... Uh, lower end materials. Having said that, the A-squared knives give uh, both Van Heerden and Andre an opportunity to make what I would consider, I don't know, I, I hope I don't offend anybody by saying this, but I kind of view the A-squared knives as a sort of field grade version of a Thorburn um, in the same way that like a field grade bodega is still like super nice and still like basically the same thing as a real bodega um just out of you know carbon fiber g10 instead of full titanium um and you know that's a frame lock so it's kind of a different story but um what i mean to say is is that field grade should not denote a lack of respect or anything like that for the knives because they are still exquisitely hand finished and of the absolute highest caliber. Um, they all run on multi-row IKBS. Maybe not all of them, but uh, all the models I, I'm familiar with run on multi-row IKBS. Um, these all run on IKBS, by the way. But uh, the A squared knives. All, all I mean is that they, you know, their liner locks. Some of them are super fancy. They have some bolster locks and stuff with zirconium and damasteel and stuff and. Those are really expensive, and and they're not as common. That's not really what I'm referring to here. But in general, with the A squared knives that you'll see, uh, they'll be you know titanium liners, uh, kind of hand uh, polished, hand satin finish like it is on these, um, and uh, you'll see some bronze and some of this teal as well. Uh, then they typically just have one material as the scale instead of having another bolster, uh, or a bolster rather, and the materials are still really high grade. You know, you'll get lightning strike carbon fiber, marble carbon fiber, um, lots of really nice G10, really well finished G10 with some intricate milling on certain models like the A3, uh, which I do have a video, maybe that video came out before this one or after, I'm not really sure about the scheduling, um, but uh, if that video is available, you should go check it out because uh, it's an excellent example of what an A-squared knife is, just beautiful G10 with a lightning strike carbon fiber inlay bolster. Um, and so, yeah, they do a lot of those knives. I, I, I believe Van Heerden's knives are typically a little bit fancier as well. So it seems like kind of an opportunity for them to make something that's still amazing, um, still absolutely top-tier knife, um, still beautifully hand-finished, but out of things that maybe somebody's more comfortable having in their pocket, um, especially maybe around friends and stuff. Not everybody wants to pull out this, like, crazy, flashy, um, super look-at-me, beautiful piece of jewelry um you know sometimes you just want to whip something out that just looks like a knife to somebody um and that's totally reasonable so a square knives are definitely awesome and then the other um sort of quote unquote version of knives that uh andre is currently meddling with is uh you can get knives with other bolsters from Frenchman Julien Marchal, um and i'm a hundred percent sure that i'm mispronouncing that as well uh terrible at names but um uh, Julian does these really beautiful, highly complex, three-dimensionally speaking, um, bolsters, and typically they're out of stainless steel. I believe I've seen some out of zirconium, um, but a lot of stainless steel for sure, um, and they're just really intricate and, and really amazing in just the three-dimensionality of them in the sense that, uh, you know, they're they're uh, really deep, the, the etches and everything and the designs. Um, and those typically pull two to three times as much as one of the knives made with Mariachi's bolsters. Um, he's apparently highly sought after as an engraver. 
And uh, so those definitely cost a pretty penny. I have not interacted with one of those Thorburns yet. Uh, so hopefully look forward to an opportunity to do that sometime in the future. All right, so that's a, a good little bit about Andre himself. Let's talk about these knives a little bit and uh, some of what you can expect from his pieces. So what we have here is an L36M uh, with a blue electric lightning strike carbon fiber scale and a titanium um, hand stippled bolster that has been uh, anodized a few different colors. It's really beautiful. And uh, I have a video on the L36 model um, I had a different one before this, and so you can definitely go and check that video out as well if you're interested in some of the details um, and specifications about this knife in particular. Here we have an L28M Slim, uh, and it has a zirconium bolster. And uh, this knife is, I'm given to understand, this could be completely wrong. This is off the top of my head, heard it probably from only one person. Um, but I'm given to understand that there are only three slim models or slim knives that he's ever made um, in this configuration where the bolster and scale are much thinner than on his other pieces. You can see these knives in scale are very, very similar, but this one is much thinner um, in terms of the... This one actually has thinner liners, believe it or not. But, uh, or roughly the same size, I suppose. They can be a little deceiving with the pattern. But the scale and bolster are definitely thicker. So, this is one of those slim models. Um, it's pretty rare, I'm given to understand, based on that fact. Has a pretty plain 3D mill titanium clip, which I really like. It's uh, really just kind of. It blends well with the knife because the whole knife has kind of that gray silver feel. You have the silver lightning strike carbon uh, fiber. Um, and then the three or four different uh, layers of gray coming through on the zirconium bolster. And, you know, unlike this clip here, which has kind of a lot more detail going on, um, is a little flashier. Um, it doesn't quite look as good on a knife like this, I don't think. I like something that's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more tame, uh, like this pocket clip here. And then finally, this is the L19 model. Uh, this has a heated zirconium bolster and, uh, again, silver lightning strike carbon fiber scale. Beautiful file work here on the titanium liners with some purple showing through in the divots. Absolutely in love with this whole back strap going on here. Beautiful knife. This thing's pretty cool. Um, it's really pointy. So if you like pointy knives, this is the one to go for. It's got an interesting handle shape. Uh, you do end up getting this piece. I have kind of like a medium glove with some chubby fingers. And uh, this little point here does fit neatly in between your pinky and your ring finger. So no worries there. Pretty comfortable. Nice jimping here. And a uh, great little knife. So let's talk about some of the things that... Uh, we find on these knives. The first thing that I want to go over is the clips. So we do have the 3D milled clip versus the spring clip. Now this particular spring clip is a little bit more advanced than the ones that I'm used to seeing. Uh, if you'd like an example of what I'm talking about, I do have a video on a Thorburn L48 um, and you can go check that out. It has one of the spring clips that's a little bit more of a wave. This seems almost like it actually was milled. Um, I don't believe it was. It's a spring clip up on a stand here. I don't know what this black material is. But uh, this spring clip's a little bit nicer than the other one at least. Um, this kind of pops out. There's some room for it. The uh, whole uh, kind of clip fades into your hand better than the other one did. The other one was much wider, thicker, had a pointier tip um, that I actually had to bend down just to make it uh, bearable. Um, so those older spring clips were really bad. This one, if you're okay with the way that it looks, I think it's a little too big and, and kind of not befitting of the knife. But if you're comfortable with it aesthetically, it's an excellent clip. It goes in and out of the pocket with one hand. It works fantastically. However, it's nothing compared with the 
3D milled clips. If you're a fan of the channel, um, A, I appreciate you, and B, at this point, you're completely aware that uh, titanium milled clips with the ceramic ball in them, it's my absolute favorite type of clip. They work flawlessly. They're in and out of the pocket with, uh, with just one hand. They don't wear on your pocket at all. It's completely smooth. Um, they are the single best clips on the market as far as I'm concerned. The only clip I've ever experienced that was better than a 3D milled pocket clip with a ceramic ball is the clip on the uh, Custom Knife Factory Stoss Biker uh, Tegral that I did a video on a while back. That thing was flawless, but these clips are definitely the way to go. Um, so if you have the option to get one against the spring clip, unless that's the kind of thing that you like. I know that some people, um, you know, they are partial to the spring clip, and if that's your flavor, then by all means, this one functions incredibly. The other one doesn't function quite as well, um, but these are excellent. So another thing that is really cool about Andre's knives, he has this signature red G10 between the scales and the liners. I'll try to give you a picture here. All three of these knives. You can see that right here between scale and liner, there is some red G10. And that is on, as far as I know, every single one of his knives. Um, I believe I saw a knife that was made in 2006 on Nordic Knives, and it also had the red uh, G10. So I'm, as far as I know, it's a it's a staple of his ever since he kind of moved on to these more modern flipper designs. You know, I don't know how long ago that was. Many many years, I'm sure. Um, but that's really cool. You know, it it's just they're always there. Um, and it's I've showed these knives to a lot of people over time, and uh, a lot of people have commented on the fact that they like that. It's just a really nice detail. It's kind of hard to see at first, but then once you give the knife a good look, you see it. Um, and it's just really impressive, you know, getting something sliced that thin, that straight, um, and having these perfect, flawless, can't feel um, the transitions at all, you know, getting that with this tiny, thin sliver of G10, it's pretty tough, quite frankly. Um, I don't know if he forms it uh, or something like that, um, but, you know, whatever method it is, it's certainly difficult. Um, so the next kind of cool signature thing to talk about Thorburn's knives is uh, something called the Thorburn Thwack, and what that refers to is the resonating sound that these knives make on deployment, and man, sometimes when you get the right uh, right grip of one, and you really rip, oh, that was actually a great example of what I'm talking about. This is something that's never going to come through on the camera, uh, or through the microphone, and Honestly, you really need to try it for yourself because it's a really special, uh, really special sound. And I think sound is a big part of a knife's action, both deploying and uh, the sound it makes when it closes. And Thorburns just have the absolute best sounds. There's nothing else like it. Uh, it can really get to the point where it's so loud and, and so resonant that it actually kind of hurts your ear. Um, if you're sitting in a small room and you really get that hit right, you can kind of like jerk your head a little bit, react to it because it's so powerful. Um, it's just really quite a sound, and uh, it, you just gotta you gotta try it for yourself. It's uh, never gonna come through on the microphone because so much about what makes it powerful is the resonance, the fact that the it's not just I don't know. Never mind. It's I'm not gonna keep gushing about it. But anyway, that's something you should definitely try out yourself. Um, so something else, like a little bit of a difference on some of the knives, these, this uh, L36 and this L19 both have this file work on the back, and this slim does not, and that's kind of a bummer, um, so if, you know, the file work is something that you're looking for. It's 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 very common on his knives. It's on many knives. Uh, looking at this one, I thought maybe it's because it was the slim version and he didn't want to do that. But these liners are actually thinner, and he still got the file work to be the best I've ever seen on that knife. So, um, if you're interested in purchasing one of Andre's knives, and you know you get an opportunity to do so, and the file work is something that really attracts you to the knife make sure you ask the uh, seller for pictures of the back strap so you can see whether or not the liners are filed or not um, because sometimes you do get one where it is not present 
So be aware. Um, so yeah, I don't know guys, that's the overview. I do have a bit of a story time real quick, um, which I want to tell about this L36. Uh, this knife is really special to me. Um, when I first bought my very first Thorburn, I bought it uh, brand new from Maker uh, from Tri-City Customs. And Tri-City, uh, it, was, it was the first major knife purchase I had made. And by major, I guess I mean over, over $400, over $500. Um, it, was the, it was the closest thing to 1000 bucks I'd ever come to. I think I paid you know 800 something for it. And uh, it was, it just had a, it had purple bolsters and it was just, it was the one, it called to me. And uh, I had heard so many good things about Thorburn uh, and his knives and, and I just, I was like, all right, we're going to do it. Let's, uh, let's buy a full on custom from the internet and see how that goes. Um, so I got the knife and it came and it didn't function. Uh, there were some major issues with the seating of the knife and coming loose and everything, and uh, it just was not working out well. Um, the uh, the flipper tab was grinding against the liners. The blade was making contact with the liners, um, and it just it was functionally not not working. So I emailed uh, Tri City, and. In fairness to Tri City, I think I like clicked reply to like my sale thread, and so I don't think I actually emailed the right email address. I probably emailed like an automated system, so that is my fault. So I don't blame Tri City for never getting back to me, but they never got back to me. Again, probably my fault. But uh, when I didn't hear from them, uh, I got a little concerned, and I had released a video about the L36 and I talked about the issues that I was having with it. Uh, it was like a sneak peek video, I think. And Andre, I guess, saw the video and got my email address from the comment section of the video. And he reached out to me proactively, which was like really cool. And he said, uh, Hey Tyler, I saw your video. You know that's super not okay. Um, I would like to bring you a replacement. Um, he was like, you know, I'm in South Africa, but uh, when I come up for Blade Show, this was like months before Blade Show, like five months before, um, maybe even longer than that. I don't know. But uh, he was like, you know, when I'm in town, maybe, well, actually, maybe it wasn't that long. Maybe it was like three months. I don't remember. Um, but he was like, when I'm in town for Blade Show, I can mail it from Atlanta to where you live, a uh, replacement knife. And I said, well, that sounds great, but I'm actually going to Blade Show so I can see you there and bring you the knife. Um, and he was like, that sounds great. Uh, you know, you can bring it to me. I'll try to fix it. And if I can't fix it, I will ha have a replacement for you. Um, and I was like, all right, that sounds great. So I had that conversation, um, and then about five days went by, and I'm a super like a anxious person, and the idea that I had this $800 amazing thing sitting in my room and I couldn't do anything with it because it didn't work, that absolutely drove me nuts. Um, so I was frantically texting friends on advice. I disassembled and reassembled the knife maybe five different times, trying to reseat everything, moving screws around, um, you know, switching the, the pivot and, and just like moving the bearings. And it, it didn't matter to me that none of it was likely to do anything. It was just like the sheer act of trying was like all I could bring myself to do. So I just kept trying different things with the knife and uh, eventually it went together and it worked and everything about it was perfect and the pivot would come a little bit loose so I loctited the pivot and once I loctited the pivot um, the whole knife it just started working uh, just the, like the fifth time that I put it back together it just the right way and everything fit properly and I went like this and it made that sound and then I went like this, and it dropped close like that. And I was like, all right, 
it's perfect. So I Loctited it and I was good to go. I think a couple weeks later, I emailed Andre and I said, hey, uh, Andre, good news. I fixed the knife. So, you know, you don't need to bring a replacement anymore. Everything's great. Uh, thank you so much for being proactive. You're an amazing person. And see you at Blade Show. Um, <laughs> after having spoken with Andre, I am given to understand that he never got that email. And his wife got it, Mariachi, and all she told him was that I'd see him at Blade Show. <laughs> so the only information that he got from that email was see you there. Uh, so obviously not enough information to correctly work with. So I find myself at Blade Show, and I can't find Andre anywhere on Friday, the first day. Um, I'm looking for him, I'm going up and down the aisles, we're checking the thing, and like, he's not there, I don't realize that A2 Knives is there, or sorry, A Squared Knives is there, which is where he ended up being, it was the A Squared Knives booth, um, and honestly, based on the booths that were next to him, like, I literally walked by him, he must have just like, not been at his table, and I just never looked down, and, I mean, I literally was in the row that he was in, but I didn't see him on Friday, and then Saturday, um, I'm walking through and I'm going to see Eugene because he wasn't at his table on Friday. Eugene from Olamic, he wasn't on his table on Friday when I went there. So I was going back to say hi to him and to give him my 247. And as I was walking by, I turned and I literally turned and I was standing in front of Andre Thorburn. Just com totally coincidentally. And I, I know his face just from the internet and I was like, oh, uh, hey wait, Andre. <laughs> and, and I was like, Oh my gosh, perfect. And so I shook his hand. And obviously when I said his name, he was like, who the fuck are you? And, uh, I was like, Hey, uh, you know, it's me, it's Tyler. It's Tovarish works. Um, he was like, Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for you. And I was like, waiting for me. And he's like, yeah, I've been waiting all day. And there he was standing by himself at this table with nothing on the table, except a little place card and this knife sitting out like that. That was it. Just him standing there by himself. He wasn't talking to anybody when I turned. He just had this knife sitting there, like like leaning up on a on like a placard like this. And he immediately picked it up and he said, "This is for you." And I said, "What?" And he said, "This is for you. You said you wanted a purple bolster." And sure enough, it's hard to see, but these leaves are purple and this knife this bolster is absolutely beautiful i love the leaf pattern and the blue electric lightning strike carbon fiber was what i had on the l48 that i love so much and i always said if i had that carbon fiber with uh, the bolster that i had on um you know my first l36 that it would have been perfect and uh this is kind of the perfect configuration for me um, and he didn't, he didn't make this knife just for me. He had this knife. Um, I think there were a couple imperfections, which allowed, uh, didn't allow him to sell it. Um, but you know, he still, he had the bolster, right? And he was standing there and this was the only knife that he had. It was the only Thorburn that he brought to Blade Show. Uh, he was there with a squared knives. I think maybe he had other Thorburns, uh, other knives out on Friday, a few, and they got bought, but I'm given to understand that he didn't have any other uh, one-off pieces from himself he was there as a squared knives and there he was standing there with this and he handed it to me this is for you and so i said didn't you get my email he said no whatever so uh, i don't want to go into the whole conversation but it was really amazing meeting him it's unbelievable that he like remembered this so many months later after not even really getting that email from me um and that it was the perfect knife for me um and so i showed him the other l36 and he was like yeah this is perfect it's fine um, and I was like, well, I still want that one. And he was like, all right, you can buy it. <laughs> so I bought it because I'm a sucker. Um, but I mean, just the fact that he brought it along for, for the purpose of replacing the knife. Um, I mean, amazing. So I had to have it obviously, uh, because as far as I'm concerned, regardless of the reality of whether or not this was just, a uh, an extra knife or, or anything like that, uh, in my head, the way I see it is that Andre, you know, made this, he brought this knife for me. And so it was mine. Um, so I was going to have it one way or another. So I ended up selling the other L36 to be able to pay for it because I had already blown way over my blade show budget 
with uh, crazy purchases like this Larevo. Um, so I did sell the other one to cover the cost of this one, but that's completely reasonable uh, because this thing is super special to me and just really, really excellent and uh, easily the best Thorburn that I've ever really come in contact with as far as I can tell. This is number five for me, um, so not too many examples, but uh, hopefully many, many more to come. So thanks so much for watching, guys. That was uh, pretty long, I'm sure. I don't actually have a counter in front of me, but uh, it feels long. My, my voice hurts, that's for sure. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see um, more Knife Maker, uh, you know, special features uh, in the future, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, if I manage to get my hands on a Rask, I might be able to do one about the Grimsmo brothers. Um, I definitely like to have many examples of an of a maker's knife at one time to be able to do it. Um, certainly, uh, Mike, Mike Gavick is somebody on the list as well. But um, if you would like to see that, let me know. Um, or if this completely bored you and you don't want uh, these videos clogging up your sub box, let me know as well. Um, if you guys would like to see amazing pictures of these beautiful, beautiful Thorburns, you can do so by following me uh, at Tovarsh Works on Instagram. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you'd like to send me a lovely loner, you can do so by emailing me at tovarshworks at gmail.com. And I will see you guys next time.